it's time for the Nebraska Women's Basketball Coaches Show. Brought to you by BMO. At top of the left wing, Darian White reverses it deep right side. Kendall Coley's going to take a three. You betcha. A triple for Kendall Coley. Nice shot by Kendall. Good ball reversal by Nebraska. High lob underneath. Caught by Markowski. Puts it up. And it counts. And a foul. What a dandy play from the side. Markowski hit the brakes. This lead for three. You betcha. On the right wing. She's on fire. That freshman pulls Nebraska back within eight. Link to the floor to go. She's having problems. Gets it in. It's deflected. Huskers get it back. Hawks puts it up and scores. The Husker defense gets two points and a Huskers lead by five. Yeah. What a play. White in the forecourt. Markowski at the buzzer for three. You betcha. Brings the crowd to its feet. Alexis Markowski with a monster first quarter. Stewart bounces underneath. Natalie Potts asks for the ball. Guarded by Parrish. Puts it up over her. And it counts. And a foul. Natalie Potts with not be denied. Now with Julian Ossibe and Jessica Keller. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Hey, I'm Jessica Cootie and uh, Amy Williams, head coach for Nebraska women's basketball, out recruiting tonight. So we have a treat for you guys listening in. We got two assistant coaches filling in tonight, Julian Asibe and Jessica Keller. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks for having us. So what happened here? You, how did you, did you draw the short straw? You say, hey, let's do it together. How did you wind up here together tonight? Yeah, we just kind of decided let's just go do it together. <laughs> we knew Coach Mays just crushed it, so we could never do it alone and do it as well as her. So we thought we could try together. The uh, newbies. We didn't find out in time or we would have gotten you wings too, but when uh, Coach Mays was here, we had her wing stop. So. Uh, she, she deserves it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a huge win last night, a big win. How important was it for your team to bounce, bounce back and get that win against Michigan last night? Yeah, it was it was really important to get us back on track. I thought, um, you know, we were we were tough, and that's something that we talked to our team a lot about. Uh, Coach Mays had the scout, probably also why she earned the night <laughs> off tonight. That just an incredible job getting us prepared to to be tough, to be tough on the boards, to be ready to defend, and and our players were up for the challenge. So you go up seventeen to three. How good was the defense, uh, Coach CB, to start? Uh, we were. It was great. It was a really good job by our team. They were communicating. I think one of the things we talked about was communicating early, making sure we're talking to each other on their ball screens and how we're going to handle it. And I thought overall we, we handled it. We got through screens and we were communicating on the backside and then finishing each play with a rebound. And I think that was the big thing was when they miss, I think they, they were scoring 40, they were getting 40% of their, of, the, of their misses, offensive rebounds. And we were like, when they miss, we got to have it. And I, I thought our girls committed to that. They had two to Lex, and she was just tipping it out to her teammates, and we were taking off and running. I thought we did a really good job. How good is it, too, that, you know, maybe not offensively the best performance, but the, the fact that you can rely on the defense to win a big one like, like that against Michigan, Jess? Yeah, we've had a few grind-out games, and I think we pride ourselves on just being able to do what it takes to get a win. And so, you know, I thought Illinois was another game that we had to really rely on our defense, our offense. We struggled at times, and it's, it's the name of the game. It's mid-January. It's a grind. The Big Ten is a really tough conference. So um, the fact that we, we know we've got that to back us up, and now as we get our offense clicking again, we feel really good. Seems like after every game, every week on this show, I'm asking Coach Williams about a different player off the bench. Uh, Kendall Moriarty last night, how, how big of the spark was it that she provided, um, especially in that run there in the first quarter? Yeah, no, Kamo does a lot of different things for us, right? She's a big guard that can defend multiple positions. But when she decides she wants to be aggressive on the offensive end, it, she's really athletic and really hard to stop. And when, yesterday, she just saw it go in one time and... She was like, okay, I can do this. And when you, when you see the ball go in sometimes, it just sparks a little more energy. And her teammates were, like, fired up when she got her first and one. And I think that just kind of sparked the rest of the day for her. And the freshman, Natalie Potts, had another big performance. Uh, her third double-double, 13 points, 10 rebounds, four of six from the field, and was perfect from the free throw line. Um, how impressive has, have you guys been by her? How impressive have you been by her in the way that she's been able to contribute so early? Yeah, we knew Natalie is a competitor. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about it before the show that – um, we knew we were getting a competitor in Natalie Potts and so excited to add her, but her efficiency, the way that she works, Coach Asibe is in charge of the post players. And so I think a huge credit to him and what he's been able to do to get her up to speed right away. And a huge opportunity we knew with losing Izzy Bourne, a four-year starter for us, that um, we needed somebody to come in at that four spot and Natalie took it. She was ready to go from the jump and just really proud of her to be resilient as a freshman. You know, you're going to go through a lot of challenges as you adjust and she's just taking it head on. 
We were talking about her, and you know, it just seems like when this team needs a big play, she seems to step up in, in the biggest moments. Well, her ability to learn, right? And I think one of, that's one of the things. She watches film, she comes in, she's watching, so she's always prepared, and then puts herself in the right spots. And again, we talked about it before the show. When when double teams are double teaming Lex and stuff like that, you she finds herself in an opportunity to like crash at the right time because everybody's going to when you have an elite level rebounder like. Like Lex, they're gonna try to get two people to her, and then she's like, "Hey, I'm gonna just go ahead and if you're gonna f forget about me, then I'm gonna go ahead and make plays." I thought it was um, funny right when Jazz Shelley got here, and, and she's working with Izzy Bourne, and Izzy's like, "Oh yeah, I have to realize how Jazz passes the ball now. You have to look alive all the time." How was that developed for Natalie? Just being ready for those no look passes, the way that Jazz can find you, you have to be stay ready, right? Right, and we talk about that a lot with her because she tends to like. She, she wants to move a lot. And sometimes I'm like, you just need to stay patient because <laughs> she's coming back to you. Okay, so even though she's not looking at you, it's coming. And you got to have your hands ready. And Nat has great hands. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing with her. She has really good hands. And so as long as Jazz is going to put it up there, she's going to go get it. And I think she's, she's learned how to play with Jazz, uh, with Jazz a little bit. And it's getting better and better. Big night for Darian White as well. How, how good was it to see her be aggressive and, and contribute offensively? Yeah, so great. I think she settled in really quickly. Just she's a confidence kid that as she starts to have some success, I think she gains more and more confidence. But uh, we tell her all the time we know she's good enough for this league, and I think she's starting to really prove it to herself. Again, her first time at this level, you know, transferring up to the, the Power Five that – um, she's really kind of, we've challenged her to be mm -hmm. that person every day. And, and she does it in practice, and I think her teammates have full confidence in her, but she's starting to really develop that confidence in herself. Yeah. So since you work with the Post, Coach Asibay, how about um, Jess Petrie and, and how she's continued to, to develop as well? She's got really nice feet. Man, great feet, great basketball IQ. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the young lady wants to work. You know what I mean? She's in every day. Um, she's been, you know, when it's my scout, usually Coach Jess and Coach Jace usually help me out when I'm working on my scout with the post. And, I mean, they were just in there the other day just putting in the work, and she just continues to grow week after week. And when her opportunity comes along, she's ready to respond. And I thought last night she gave us a huge spark. That, that, that pivot and and one, I mean, come on, you saw the way that her teammates responded to that too, is that, like, when you see your teammates putting in that work and then it comes to fruition in the games, I mean, it, it's really cool to see, and I'm really happy for her. You know, one of the things we were, we were talking about before the show, too, is um, Jazz Shelley, and she's so unselfish, but she can score it. So how do you guys balance, like, you know, asking her to maybe look for a <laughs> shot a little bit more, be aggressive? <laughs> you guys are both laughing. I'm assuming that's conversations you have with her about <laughs> looking for her shot more and, and being more aggressive. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I think she's she's just so skilled, and she's mm -hmm. she's elite. And her conditioning is elite. Her basketball IQ is elite. Her passing ability, but also her scoring ability. So we talk about film studies. We do a lot of film together. We spend a lot of time just you know where can you find those shots? Where can we get better shots for you on the with the ball in your hands, off the ball? Um, we've got great. Pat, drive and kick players. We've got Darian White can get in the lane at will. Maddie Kroll can get downhill. Callan Hake, when she gets in, I think she plays with great pace. And so trying to find those avenues for Jazz off the ball, but also when she's got the ball in her hands, the fact that she garners so much attention, sometimes people make mistakes. And I think we want her to take advantage of those just as much. Uh, going back to the Michigan win and, you know, you guys jump out to the big lead and then Michigan goes on a run. Um, how important was it for this team to sustain that run and, and respond to that and go on the run of their own and, and kind of regain the lead? Well, we play in the Big Ten, and <laughs> everybody's going to make runs. And uh -huh. how you handle that, you know what I mean? I thought we did a great job as a team collectively of like, okay, we understand that we're going to make theirs, but now it's time to punch again. You know what I mean? How are we going to respond? How are we going to go back in and, and calm down and understand that, like, hey, we're still getting the same looks. The shot just didn't go in. Okay, so keep going, and those shots will go in. And then buckle down on the defensive end because, you know, we got to look comfortable there for a second. Oh, we had it. And then you have to just lock in, you know what I mean, because there's talented players on the other end, and they're going to make a run, and we just have to keep at it. So, um, you know, coming off the loss to Minnesota, I know this team was super disappointed. How was the practice and going back to the film and looking at maybe some of the things from Minnesota that you guys tried to take away and, and show this team to learn from coming off that loss at Minnesota? Yeah, our film session was actually a, a little different than it has been in the past. And, and we talked a lot in segments of our game instead of just specific plays or clips or instances and, and really just dissected it as a group to say, what are the tendencies that we're seeing when, when we're not able to get 
paint touches were mm -hmm. not having a ton of success at the three-point line even. And so talking to our team, allowing our players to recognize that themselves and just talk through it, um, we focused a lot on that, our ability to get great shots for our team. The, individually, they're good shots for each person, but within the flow of the game, tr trying to help our players understand things. And the greatest part about playing for Coach Williams is that she's not going to micromanage our players. And so we need them to continue to develop their IQ as we're playing throughout the season. One of the things she said in, in her post-game interview with Matt Cotney was that we've got to learn how to, they're always going to fight, but we've got to fight smarter and we've got to clean up the mistakes that we continue to make. Can you maybe dive into that, Coach Asibe, about fighting smarter? What, what goes into that? Right, you know what I mean? And I, as Coach uh, said, you know what I mean? Teaching them how to play through the flow of the game, right? Understanding that, hey, in the first quarter, me taking a chance and doubling and, and getting a steal is great. But when you do the same thing in the, in the fourth, and they also saw that you did that, and now you give up a wide open three, not the right time to take those opportunities. And then understanding what time to take different shots, right? Transition three, a little after we've missed two or three buckets, probably not the right time to take one. Even though it's a good shot for you, maybe we should get a paint touch, as Coach just said, and then teaching us how to do that because they are very confident, and Coach is not going to micromanage because we know you can hit that shot but understanding the flow of the game and then, okay, you know what? Yes, I could have taken that shot, but if I get to the paint here, an end one is the same way as a three-pointer, right? <laughs> and so maybe now, now their best player has three fouls and she's sitting, you know, understanding the flow of the game and how we can also get easy buckets and not compound multiple possessions of empty, empty possessions. So that 17-0 run out in, of the halftime, what, what went into that? and getting things going there so so good they're out of the halftime yeah i think we we encourage our players to play with pace as we always do but that kind of smart decision making as we get paint touches and then i thought our defense sparked us again as it as it has throughout this season that we were able to get looks um obviously we went to lex early again and it's, she's a mainstay of our offense and i think you know, as we talked before, I think she's one of the best players in the country. And so our ability to play through her, but also have our other players step up and make plays, um, definitely. It's going to be somebody different every night, and that's something that's great about this team. We talk so much about Jazz and her ability to pass and shoot, but how about her, her efforts on the defensive end and, and some of the things she can do defensively? Yeah, again, elite. Just her conditioning, her ability to disrupt the other team's best player. We had her chasing Mara Braun, mm -hmm. you know, at Minnesota, really frustrated that kid. And then last night we said, okay, now you're going to guard Layla Filia, first team, you know, all, all league kid. So um, she just, she's up for the challenge, and I think she wants to win. And that's why she came back. She wants to, to continue to raise the bar for the University of Nebraska, and she's doing that on both sides of the ball for us. How do you balance that? Because it's not easy. A lot of times when you're, you're asked to do so much on the offensive end, a lot of times, I mean, you could argue maybe a little bit with Caitlin Clark sometimes. You know, some mm -hmm. of the best offensive players don't necessarily always have the effort and energy to be able to apply to the defensive end. So how do you balance being elite on both ends of the court? Discipline. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She's disciplined with how she conditions. She's disciplined with how she trains. She's disciplined on the film watching. She's, so she knows when to take the right angle. I don't have to get hit by screens all the time. I can chase, 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 shoot the gap here and not get touched so that I'm not wasting so much energy trying to fight through all these screens. She's very intelligent and she's, she spends time preparing. And I think that buys her those opportunities to be able to play as long as she does and do what she does defensively and help us offensively. She better on the offensive or defensive end? I don't know right now. Yeah. She elite. She's good at both. I think, uh, and they know this, good offense beats good defense. So mm -hmm. I think she's good on the offensive end. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, that is our first segment here uh, with our Nebraska women's basketball show with Julian Nasibe and Jessica Keller. Um, if you want to be a part of the show, 402-413-2400, that number to call or text on our Woodhouse Sports Nightly Hotline. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammates mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. 
everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you, too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Experience the thrill of the open road with Woodhouse Chevy. Whether it's the city streets or rugged terrain, Woodhouse Chevy delivers an unparalleled experience. Lease a 2023 Chevy Traverse LS for $449 a month for 36 months, 10,000 miles per year. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy with approved credit, first payment, and $299 dock fee due at signing. Must have GM lease loyalty or lease conquest to qualify. Offer expires 131 2024. See dealer for details. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our Nebraska women's basketball show, I'm Jessica Cootie, joined by a pair of assistant coaches tonight, Julian Asibe and Jessica Keller. Well, um, Going back to the Minnesota game, I should have asked, how about Callan Hake and the way she stepped up there at the end and really was a big part of giving you guys a chance there at the end to win that game? Yeah, again, another player that is prepared. She's ready for her role. She's, she's thriving in it. Um, she's, she's just got a knack for making shots. And, and I thought she just she plays with confidence and her ability to get other people's shots but also know that ball's coming back to her. And I thought, you know, early probably a little shaky, um, missed a couple, and, and just, again, being able to knock down her last two – Gave us a chance on a putback that I thought maybe could have been an and one to tie the game. That um, she's tough. She's a tough kid. You know, mm -hmm. she had a 50 50 ball last night where pretty big time collision that she's tough and she wants to win. There's been a, a lot that's been reported on, talked about, about, you know, her moving, maybe running the point a little bit and, and going to point guard school okay. with Jazz Shelley. But, but it just seems like Jazz has really taken her under her wing since she's got on campus. How, how special is that relationship between Jazz and Callan? Yeah, it's incredibly special. And just to see Jazz pour into someone that is kind of, 
you know, going to be the next bringing the torch along for us, but also Callen to, to take advantage of that resource. You've got one of the best players in the country right on your team next to you. And so um, Callen's willingness to learn from Jazz, and, and they'll come in and watch film together. They'll watch separately. They'll work out together. They'll work out separately. You know, they, individually, they're very different players, but uh, obviously together they're incredible. We were uh, talking before we got, came on the air about uh, Alexis Markowski. Is she getting enough attention nationally? No. No. Uh, no, she's not. You no. know what I mean? No. She's arguably one of the best post players in the country, hands down, without a question. Uh, the way she handles double teams, the way she has to fight through. They don't even get, she don't even get officiated correctly, I don't think. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I might be a little biased, but at the same time, like... Please don't find us. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, she takes a lot on every single night and still is able to put up double-doubles every night through all of that with, with no complaints. But she's put in the work. You know what I mean? She's put in the work, and I hope at the end of the year, everybody's gonna, she's going to get the recognition she deserves. She's got to be at the top of, of everybody's scout when they're playing Nebraska and keeping her off the glass is a huge emphasis for every team but yet she still dominates on the glass what is it about her that allows her to still be so effective on the boards even despite people trying to keep her off the boards well she has elite level timing her timing and great hands right if she's not going to be able to grab it she's going to tip it to mm -hmm. herself and then go get it and that's an that's an act you can't teach right it, it's a it's a will it's a want to and she has that I'm going to go get this ball and you're not going to stop me and it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. And I, sometimes I wish I could take that and put in some of our other, po you know, all of our post players, but it's a skill set that she's developed over many years. I also think that, you know, her playing volleyball and, and that touch that she had to have mm. um, probably helped a little bit because she can track that basketball really quickly. And you know when I, know I played a little volleyball back in the day, that quick <laughs> set, you got to go find that ball quickly. Uh -huh. and, and so I think there's a lot of different things, but her ability to work and just outwork everybody is what she brings, how she does that. Jessica, where have you seen her game maybe grow the most in now that into her junior season? Yeah, just her consistency. And I think Coach Williams has talked a lot about it, her self-accountability first to know, like, I can do this and I'm going to do it. I'm mm -hmm. going to do what it takes. And um, just every day. We see it every day in practice. And she's dominant. She's dominant against our scout guys who are, are really good players as well. But um, she's put in the work. And I think just her consistency day in and day out with not only her production, but her effort. And, and especially... Um, I think she's, she's her conditioning, and credit to Alex Jardine, our strength and conditioning coach, that's just gotten her in, a, in elite shape. Um, she's hungry to be even better, and you talk about competitors, that's another player that wears that in proudly, <laughs> wants to win. Um, so I wanted to, to talk a little bit about you guys individually. Jessica, your second season on staff, how have, has the adjustments been going into year number two with this program, with Coach Williams and being in Lincoln? Yeah, well, I'm kind of mad that Coach Julian had to come in, and now I can't say I'm the new guy anymore. <laughs> but um, it's it's been incredible. I think it's been just something so special to come in and join this program. And Coach Williams and Coach Mays together have just done so much that their willingness to hire new ideas and new people it, it shows to what you know they're obviously capable of doing on their own, but their willingness to bring us in and take us under their wings and kind of allow us to contribute in our own ways. And when we talked to you, Coach Sebe, it was like you had just gotten here. It was um, whirlwind. You were trying to get settled in, get your family here. How have you liked being in Lincoln and working for Nebraska? I mean, it's been a blessing. Everything that I've been told is exactly what it is, right? And the, the, the fan base, the community, all of it, and then the staff. I mean, I was just on the phone today. I was talking to actually our, one of my um, athletes in action, um, guys back in Gainesville and he's like man how are you doing and I'm like man like if I told you I was doing it, it it'll make you feel bad because I, I'm I'm doing too good you, you know what I mean the, the people I get to work with every day the the leadership that we have um I think it's it's been amazing so you you came from the SEC what would have been the adjustments to the Big Ten and playing in this conference yeah the the style of play and and the, and the preparation for each team is so different hmm. every night Right, we're, we're, we're one minute you're gonna do this, the next you're doing that. Okay, now we gotta guard this kind of shooter. I mean, the the the, the teams are so different, and how we have to prepare for each team. Where in the SEC, very athletic. We're coming down, we're coming to you, a, a lot more athletes. So you you your game plans are a little more similar, um, but here every every night, it's a 
uh, you're going to see something different, and the, the way you prepare for the games are, are very different here. What about for you, the adjustments coming to the Big Ten? Yeah, obviously I came from a mid-major program that um, everybody is just bigger, faster, stronger. And it was really impressive my first few days on the job of just, you know, I jumped into practice with some players at, at Illinois State. And then when I jumped in and I couldn't reach them at Nebraska, I was like, <laughs> this is a little different. But, um, you know, I think there's great coaching at that level and there's great coaching in the Big Ten. So similarities in that aspect. But obviously this is... Uh, we think it's the best league in, in the country, and so um, we know we've got to be prepared every night and, and our ability to recruit the greatest players in the country also. Um, it's a benefit. Mm -hmm. So I uh, got a little fun question for you. I want you guys to each tell me what's the best aspect of each of other as a coach. What are the best the things that Coach Acebe does best and what are the best things that Coach Keller does? I'll go first. <laughs> uh, Coach Asibe, his energy, I think just how he pours into other people and, and is able to pull out the best. And also, there's never going to be a day where you're wondering, like, is he going to bring it? Because he comes every single day with that same fire, that same passion. And, and not just, it's for Husker women's basketball, but it's for us to be great people and, and great teammates and great coaches. And um, I think he just, his energy brings out the best in everyone. Well, this one is an easy one. I didn't even have to <laughs> think about this one. Coach Keller's like basketball IQ is so elite is not even funny. And I literally was just talking to Coach Jace about it today. Like her ability to to dissect defenses and what she sees and how we want to attack different things. I, I'm envious every day. And I, I'm so thankful that I get to work with somebody like that because I can walk in and be like, hey, what do you think? And we can talk about different mm -hmm. things and, and stuff like that. And it's really cool to have a staff like that that you can just – we can just talk about so many different things and to work with somebody like this, it, it's been a blessing for me to have somebody like that on our staff. So you guys do it where you each take a, an opponent and you are in charge of the scout. I think it might be interesting for fans to hear how you go about preparing your scout and how you go about presenting that scout to the team. Well, who, Coach Julian is in charge of the next one so we can talk about okay. his preparation. Yeah, no. Penn State who's playing right now. Who's, who's actually playing right now? No, there's... So preparing a scout, first you start with, I mean, we're going to get all the, st the stats and everything. You're going to break down who plays, minutes. And then we, we get to film watching, right? I'm probably going to watch about seven to eight games that they've played, every single Big Ten game they've played, how they're defending things, what, what actions and how they play. And then I'm going to break down all their offensive sets. And then we're going to kind of divvy it up. And then I'm gonna, we're going to decide, okay, if they, they, run this, they run this action twice a game. That's probably something that we probably need to go over because they're going to run it every time. You're going to see it every time. And then there's going to be some special situations. There's going to be some plays they like to run that, okay, I might show you on film, but we might not go over it on the floor. And so there's this, and then when it comes to the team, we, we get two-day prep. So not always do we get a two-day prep. <laughs> like, <laughs> sometimes. Um, sometimes you only get one-day prep, but this, like going into Penn State, we get a two-day prep. So tomorrow, we're probably going to watch the personnel and we'll go over each, the personnel, maybe watch some of their defense going to practice and then the next day we'll probably watch the whole film where we'll show them some of their offensive sets some tendencies what they like to do and then we'll show our special situations and then get on the floor we'll go over it you know the, how we want to defend things we'll meet as a staff okay hey, they like to run this ball screen do we want it hard heads do we want to nudge and under and then we'll come up with a game plan on how we want to defend their actions and then get ready for the game and to be honest, I'm information overload in my <laughs> scout. So um, the girls, the joke on our team is they, they kind of set an over-under on how long my scout and everyone's scout will take. And I am proud to say I'm usually I'm trying winning. to hit the under, but um, they set it pretty high for me. But yeah, I think that's the greatest thing about Coach Williams is her ability to take in all the information and know exactly what our team needs mm -hmm. and, and what we need, not having our kids' heads swimming, and, um, but being prepared for what we're going to see. And... Um, I, I think that's just it's an incredible trait of hers and an incredible strength of hers. So do you guys find yourselves um, maybe leaning towards looking at the defense or offense more? Yeah, obviously when it's your scout, you're in charge of trying to stop the opponent's offense uh -huh. first. So you're, you're focused on what they're running, how we're going to stop them. Um, I really, I love offense. And so when it's not my scout, I'm trying to watch the opponent's defense. And mm -hmm. we run a lot of ball screens. And so I, I'm all constantly dissecting ball screen coverages and some things that we think we could take advantage of. Um, when it is my scout, obviously same, same thing, but we've got Coach Julian's looking at post-defense, Coach Mays is looking at what are the guards doing, like where can we get those. So within our own scouts, we're, we're responsible for both sides of the yeah. ball, but when it's not our scout, we're trying to contribute with our position groups and some of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, and then, so you coach the post. Mm -hmm. um, how have you enjoyed working with this post group? How did you get into working with the posts, I guess? Well, I mean, it, one of the cool things about our staff, and I think I tell people all the time that we've all, everybody on our staff has had the pleasure of coaching at the Division Two or lower levels. And at those stages, we coach every position, yeah. right? We don't have a staff of four or five. And so you get to learn how to coach every position. And then depending on what, what staff you get on, uh, you know, Coach Mays and Coach Jess were already here. They're already kind of coaching the guards. And I know Coach Jess can coach the post as well. And I've had it the last few years and my last few stops. So, you know, I mean, yes, I'm, I'm probably the shortest um, post coach <laughs> in the country. But I, I love the physicality of it. I love the attention to detail. You know, I mean, when you're on the perimeter, there's a lot of different things you can do as a guard. But when you're on the post and you're banging down there, you have to be very intentional with your footwork, hands placement, you know, positioning. And so you can get, you know, deep seals or set defenses up. And so that, that whole part of it of teaching the young ladies how to look for those things. I mean, you see it all the time. Lex just sets people up, they tuck their back, and then she just kind of shoves them up slowly and Jazz puts it right over the top. Boom, gets a nice little layup. You know what I mean? Teaching them those things and how to set themselves up to get easy buckets. Right? You don't have to always have to make a post move to score. When you're developing a young post player, what's kind of the – most important aspect, especially once they get to this level? Feet and, and positioning. Yeah. If they can understand feet and positioning, because the game happens so fast and you have strong post players. I mean, and in the Big Ten, there's some elite level post players in there. So you have to be able to have good feet. You have to be able to move your feet and set people up. And then you have to have great hands. If you have really good hands, you can finish around the basket. Um, and then after that, we can start working on actions and all that stuff. But if you can, if you can learn how to move your feet and set people up so you can just catch and score um, is usually where we start. I start with there. So same thing for you. What's kind of the, the first things when you start working with guards that you want to make sure that they know, especially working here at Nebraska? Yeah, I think obviously Coach Mays is, is an elite guard coach mm -hmm. as well. And so my ability just to kind of bounce off of her and, and really bring some new ideas, but handle. I, you know, you can't do anything if you can't dribble the ball. And so we talk a lot about can we get to where we're going? We've got to have a great handle. So we do a ton of ball handling stuff, but um, we really emphasize passing and our team shares the ball a lot. And so uh, I think those are the first two things that, you know, you can get players more reps at shooting the ball. And we've got incredible support staff. I think Jace Henderson and Taylor Edwards are to our uh, player development and then our graduate assistant. They spend tons and tons of hours with our players on the floor with some of those repetition shots. But, um, you know, our scout guys are constantly challenging our guards to just, can we handle the ball? Can we get to where we need to go? And then obviously we talk a lot about playing to our strengths. So. It, Kendall Moriarty, we saw her ability to get to the rim and finish. So we work a lot on her finishes at the rim. But at Callan Hake, where she maybe isn't getting all the way downhill, how does she get her shots? And how do we get some uh, maybe floaters or pull-ups with her game? And so trying to individualize it is really important, too. So when you joined the staff, how much did you like the, the guard play that Coach Williams has where everybody has to do everything, everybody needs to be able to distribute, everybody needs to be able to bring it up. It's, it's really kind of... You have very versatile guards in this system. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And it allows you, you don't feel pigeonholed with anyone's mm -hmm. player development. And so now it's like, hey, Allison Widener, you got to be able to shoot that ball because you've been such a great athlete at getting downhill in high school and people couldn't keep you in front. But now we got, we got to get you to stretch it and just the hours and the work that she puts in and, and still is back on that. And now, um, you know, a Darian White that we're able to bring in like, hey, Darian, you, we know you can get shots, but when you're playing off the ball now, let's continue to develop your IQ. And I think it's so fun. You know, it, it just allows us limitless possibilities in training. And then again, just being able to put them in positions to be successful. All right, got to work in another break here on our Nebraska women's basketball show. BMO is a proud sponsor of the Huskers Radio Network. We're committed to helping our customers make real financial progress. To learn more, visit BMO.com. Back with more of the show coming up right after this. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. There's no community like a Cenex community. 
And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. A couple more segments of our Nebraska women's basketball show here with Julian Asibe and Jessica Keller. Well, we mentioned uh, Coach Williams is out recruiting tonight. How do you guys go about planning, scheduling, recruiting, and seeing the, the players that you need to see during the season? <laughs> it's a dance. It's a <laughs> dance for sure. And it's, um, again, something that Coach Williams is, is really confident and and allows us to be collaborative and everything and so um, we kind of just put all of us together and sit in a room and say you know who who's available who's playing who do we need to see um, and then what kind of prioritizing her time because not only is she watching we talk about we get every third scout she has every scout and so she's watching every single game trying to prepare you know for every opponent as it comes and and so we like to balance it but also people want to see coach Williams and so <laughs> um, we try to get her out there as often as we can. And then, you know, how do you go about planning certain recruiting classes? I mean, how far are you looking ahead? What needs are going to be needed? I mean, it just is such a big puzzle piece, right? It, it's a huge puzzle piece. And, and obviously, the transfer portal changes the game as well. So before you were, okay, you knew. And obviously, COVID has also changed the game a little mm -hmm. bit. And until that, we got one more season of that before it becomes a little more normal. But you kind of plan it out. Okay, yeah, we're going to have three seniors this class. Okay, here's what we're going to be missing. Okay, here's what we're going to need to add. If we did add a guard in the in class before, we might want to add a forward or, you know what I mean? You try to, you're always, I mean, her, her, Coach Keller's board in her office has a lot of different things on it, and we're always trying to match that and try to figure out what we're going to need, you know what I mean? And you'd all, you try to be team building, right? You're always team building and figuring out, okay, we don't need two of the same person. Right. You know what I mean? And so, you, yes, we need a guard. Well, what type of guard? Do we need a downhill guard? Do you need a shooting guard? You need a big guard that can guard multiple positions, and, and, and we're always constantly communicating and trying to figure out that. So we got a text question. Could you guys talk about Amaya Hargrove and, and what we're getting out of her? Gladly. I think um, <laughs> Amaya, she's special, and, and she's just she's uncommon because she's such an achiever in everything she does. And so that's first and foremost something that we love about her. Um, she's an incredible achiever on the basketball floor, but also 
uh, as an as a student athlete, as a student, she's a great you know high level student. But um, you know she's involved in everything. She's a leader in FCA, and she's involved in in all of their leadership opportunities that she can be in Christopher. But um, you know I think she's she's kind of that that stretch four that um, she's got some great bounce to her. She can score in the mid range. She's got a really good coach. Julian's probably going to steal her in the post a little <laughs> bit, um, and and we're going to see what she can do. You know inside and outside. This yeah. trio. Have, are having an impressive senior season with Kennedy Williams and uh, Britt Prince and, and Amaya. They're they're putting on a show during their senior seasons. Well, we, we like winners. <laughs> you know, we like winners and we like kids that like to work. You know what I mean? And these three work. You know what I mean? Nothing's ever been handed to them. They've they've worked for what they have and they love to be in the gym. They love to get the grind of it. You know what I mean? And the preparation of it. You know, Kennedy is obviously, yes, coming from a basketball family and all, but she, she works for everything she gets and the opportunity to any chance she has the opportunity to be in the gym she's in the gym you know what i mean and she understands that what she has to do looks a little different than everybody else you know what i mean and then obviously Britt is Britt, Britt can score on all three low i mean coach amy showed me a, 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 a stat today i mean i think she's shooting like 60 percent from the field right now wow i mean and i'm like is that real you, you know what i mean because she's scoring at the rim she's shooting threes all that and she's still okay all right but uh, and Amaya, like, her athleticism is, is sneaky athletic, right? She, all of a sudden, boom, she bounces up and she goes grab a rebound. You're like, wow, I didn't know you can get up that high, you know what I mean? And so I think all these three are, are very special in their own way, but their, their ability to work and how they, have, they enjoy what they do. So you guys go about building these bonds and relationships over the course of years and pretty cool full circle moments for both of you because Jess, you recruited Natalie Potts and uh, Julian, you recruited Darian White. Um, so how cool was that when you joined the staff and then, hey, here comes Natalie Potts here to Nebraska? Yeah, it was really cool. And I had the fortune of actually recruiting a few of the players who chose <laughs> Nebraska before I got here. Um, Natalie needed a little encouraging after I left Illinois State. Um, I had some conversations with her when I was there, but she hadn't made her mind up when I took the job here. And so my first call was to Natalie and to say, hey, I, I think you were waiting for me to come to Nebraska. She wasn't, but it did work <laughs> out, um, you know, very, very lucky. And I, I've had just a ton of respect for Dan Rolfes and what he does at Incarnate Word Academy, um, one of the best teams in the country every year at the high school level and knowing what kind of a IQ player, high IQ player that we're going to get. But I had a chance to see Callen Hake in high school. I talked to Allison Widener on the phone, a few of those players that when I got here, Kendall Moriarty, all of them, um, I had a little bit of a relationship. So mm -hmm. uh, when I showed up, I wasn't a total stranger to some of them. But uh, yeah, it's just such a cool thing. The basketball world is so small. And then getting to work with Darian again, yeah. how special has it been? It's been, it's been a blessing. It's been, it's been so much fun. And, you know, yes, I, you know, got to recruit her when she was out of high school to Montana State and, and coached her for a year there. And then having the opportunity to coach her her last go around in the, in the, in the collegiate level has been, it's been so much fun just to watch her maturity and her growth. You know, seeing her when she first got into college and now where she is. Um, as a graduate student and, and doing it right now and also still being able to to mentor and, and be a part of her life and even same with Logan Nisley you know what I mean it was really cool to like oh man when this whole thing happened I'm like man I get the opportunity I actually we were one of her first offers division one offers at Montana State with Logan Nisley so I'm like like it just works out the way it's supposed to you, you know there's some kids you're just supposed to coach and it's been pretty cool that we're all here getting to do that with these young ladies. Oh, that's awesome. All right, let's uh, get to our final break here on our Nebraska women's basketball show. Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavor build. He's got one more segment here with the assistant coaches. We're going to preview the Penn State matchup, so keep it here. And uh, if, again, if you want to be a part of the show, 402 413 2400 is that number to text or call. Back with more coming up. Life is busy. Wouldn't it be great if someone could help you manage your insurance? Well, I do have a lot to keep on top of. Between the house, my life insurance, the car. Like you said, life is busy. A local Trusted Choice independent insurance agent can help you with your research, coverage selection, pricing, and claims at no extra cost to you. Which means I'll have more time to spend on other things. Trusted Choice independent insurance agents. We'll help do your insurance. You just do you. 
Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1 4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. I should have asked you guys this um, in that last segment when you are talking about Allison Weiner, but there's a lot of interest about her. We get texts about her. Amy was asked about her last week and said her, her progress is coming along. But what is what are your guys' perspective on, on her and, and how she works and how she's attacking this rehab? Yeah, she's resilient, and it's unfair that she has to prove that again mm -hmm. this season, but um, she is, just like you said, attacking this rehab. And uh, yesterday, right before the, the posting guards were doing skill work before the game, before warm-ups just truly started, um, she asked the guards to go one more round so she could jump into ball handling. So she's eager. Um, <laughs> we're excited to get her back. She's working. We're, we have to kind of hold the reins a little yeah. bit because she'll she'll jump in there and she'll do probably more than she's really supposed to be doing but um, we're just as anxious to get her back. You talk about challenging her and improving her outside shot has that we didn't get to see it obviously as fans but has that come along here since she last took the floor for for Nebraska? Yeah right now she's limited um, to pretty stationary stuff mm -hmm. and so we're spending a lot of time on her handle as we talked about you know yeah. with the guards ball handling abilities but um, I thought she just gained so much confidence at the, you know, towards the middle of last season before we lost her to that, that injury that um, she knows that she can shoot it. And so we worked a lot with consistency and her footwork into that shot. And I think she's carried that over um, and, and she'll be ready to, to score it at all three levels again. Well, Coach Asiba, your, your first season at this, what's been your perspective of the support of Husker women's basketball, of, of women's sports here in Lincoln? It, it's, it's amazing. It's what I've heard all about, and I get to experience it every day. And my neighborhood, I mean, now they just honk at me now as I go big red. <laughs> so it, it, it's pretty cool, um, the support we get around here and, and how they, they wrap their arms around you. I mean, the other, the other night, I think we had about 3,000, and I don't think anybody was leaving their house. It was cold, and people still were here, you know what I mean? And that's, that shows how much they care and how much they're willing to support our team. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool to be a part of something like that. And how much have you enjoyed being a part of this athletics department that does from top to bottom really support their women's sports and uh, it's pretty competitive too. Yeah, it's so awesome. I think, you know, obviously what our department was able to put together for the volleyball day, mm -hmm. you know, in the fall really set the tone for, um, we're continuing to elevate the, the programs and um, to really lean into each other. You know, we shared an athlete for a while and um, so we're incredibly invested in not just volleyball, but, you know, we've had a chance to spend some time with the softball team and, you know, mm -hmm. we're so excited. I know they're top 15 and about to start to, I think, tomorrow's media day. So um, we just, every one of the sports, you know, our track and field team, just unbelievable. They've got national winners, you know, on that team. So um, can't say enough about the support from the top from Trev that allows us to be great, to lean into each other. And, um, you know, women's basketball is at, I think it's at the pinnacle. It's continuing to climb, but um, one of the most popular things going. What did the recruits say during volleyball day? Dude, they loved every minute of it. <laughs> and I mean, I, the recruits, our staff, all of us, I mean, we, we all got choked up. I mean, the, the, what it is to like, 
to do to have an event that way and people to just say yes i want to be a part of that mm -hmm. and to to look around and there's 100,000 people 92,000 people in one place just to watch a volleyball game to support and and then to i couldn't open my twitter because either my brother or my cousins or random people are Dude, were you there that was so cool <laughs> watch that on tv and so to be a part of our athletic department that's willing to think outside the box mm -hmm. and, and, and support our women's programs and do things like that. That's, that's a place you want to be at. And I thought our recruits were like, uh, one, I, one of the parents that was here, I actually played against in college and we were talking about it. He's like, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. And I'm like, yeah, this is what we're about here. And if, if you want to allow your daughter to come here, this is, this is the kind of support she's going to get. Yeah, because you guys both are, are different places. I mean, you just don't find from top to bottom the kind of support for all the sports, not just, I mean, yeah, there might be a, a big following for one sport or they might get really good crowds for one women's sport, but, but across the board, it's just, it's pretty rare, right, uh, across the country? Absolutely. It's, it's special here, and I think, you know, it's, like you said, it's all the sports, it's across, it's throughout the community, it's throughout the state. Um, you know, when I wasn't coaching here, I had the chance to recruit people from this state, and I I learned firsthand that when we were having visits, we had to stop for Husker football games. We, it didn't matter. We, we knew we had to find a place for those Nebraska fans to watch. And we were recruiting their daughters out of state. And um, so I think just the ability for us to be here and recruit to the university and to be surrounded by such an incredible fan base, this is what college athletes want to experience. Mm -hmm. All right, well, coming up, we got Penn State. Uh, it's your scout, Coach Acebe. Tell us about Penn State and, and what that matchup looks like. Athletic, fast, and, and they want to score. And they want to score the, their elite level team. They're scoring about 86 points a game. And, and so they're going to they're gonna push it. They want to rebound and play fast. But they also want to play fast on the other end. Okay, so they're going to press you. They want to they push the pace and they're going to be aggressive. We got to be able to take care of the ball. And then we also have to be poised okay, and make them defend a little bit because they will get out of, uh, out of rotation if you make them defend past, you know, two or three passes because they want to run around and, and cause havoc. And so if you're patient, you're going to get a lot of looks, but they want to get up and down, and we have to be able to stop, slow the ball down, defend like we did the, the other night. I think we're going to be good shape. So that's something that, you know, Coach Williams talks about playing with pace. So sometimes you guys like to play fast. When you're playing a team that also likes to play fast, how do you balance that? Right, and actually that was one of the things that we talked to them about um, going into last night's game. We want to play with pace, but you want to play. Pace doesn't always mean you're playing fast. Fast, yeah. It doesn't mean you're playing fast. Pace means, okay, we're getting up the, the floor, we're sprinting to our screens. Okay, we cut hard. Okay, so the, you're moving fast. It doesn't mean you're playing fast and the ball's just going up in less than 10 seconds. So you talk about protecting the home court inside PBA. How important is it, how big is it to find some ways to win some on the road and get some, some road wins? Yeah, it's tough. Obviously, we know we've got to be uh, you know, a few points better when you go on the road. We don't have the environment that we're so fortunate to have it in Pinnacle Bank Arena, but it's really important to get those, and I think this is another opportunity. We felt like we stubbed our toe a little bit at Minnesota, and so we get another opportunity, and, and the reality is we're, we're going to have to take some on the road. I think we looked at six road games and five home games left, so yeah. we're coming down to it. we got to find some ways to steal some. Awesome. Well, great stuff. You survived, right? Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Julian Asibe and Jessica Keller with Nebraska Women's Basketball. Appreciate your time. Uh, great stuff, and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. thank you. All right, again, Penn State coming up on Sunday. That's next up for Nebraska Women's Basketball. Noon, and it's on Big Ten Plus, but Penn State coming in 11-5, 2-3. and three. They are playing Purdue right now on the Big Ten Network. All right, that's going to do it for our Nebraska Women's Basketball Show. We've got another hour of Sports Nightly coming up, and we're going to hear from Heather Brink, head coach for, for Nebraska Women's Gymnastics, who have their home opener and their Big Ten opener coming up on Saturday inside the Devaney Center. And uh, going to talk a little Nebraska men's basketball as well. Tough one last night on the road at Rutgers. So keep it here. Full hour of Sports Nightly coming up on the other side of this. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Purchasing your next car, truck, or SUV from Woodhouse Ford is easier than ever thanks to our streamlined buying process. Shop our current inventory and offers going on now and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford today. Lease a 2023 Ford F-150 STX for $449 a month for 39 months, 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 dock fee due at signing with approved credit. Security deposit waived. Vehicle is a retired courtesy loaner. Stock number FC231453. Offer expires 131-2024. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers.
Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Lamar Jackson's favorite target on the Baltimore Ravens, tight end Mark Andrews, is still listed as questionable for Saturday's divisional playoff game against the Houston Texans. Andrews injured his left ankle on November 16th, but was a full participant in practice yesterday. The call for him is still in the air. Three high-ranked employees for the Arizona Cardinals were fired yesterday. This includes Chief Financial Officer Greg Lee, Vice President of Business Development Mike Yaquinta, and Vice President of Digital Content and Creative Tim Delaney. This was called a new beginning for the Cardinals and are in the process of hiring more people for their staff. The Nebraska women's tennis team gained a new recruit earlier today. Texas native Ray Koye spent her freshman fall season at the 2023 NSAA NCAA runner-up NC State, ending the season 5-6 and six in singles play and 2-1 and one in doubles. Koye was a five-star recruit before the freshman season, and her addition to the Huskers team was welcomed with open arms. Art Sports Ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here's Mast with the ball, coming to it, Tominaga, gives on the hash mark, Hoiberg drives the ball, reverse layup with the left hand, oh my goodness. circus shot, absolutely, circus shot by Sammy Hoiberg. She will reset with 12 on the shot clock, once the screen gets it from Markowski, to the right elbow, back out top, Markowski will shoot a three, you betcha, ties the game, a three-pointer by Markowski off the assist from Hayes. Mast hands it off to Hoiberg, coming right to left, faces up, throws back to Tominaga, got a good look on the way, got it, got it, the net hangs up on the rim, it was so pure, three ball, another CBA three, Casey gives Nebraska the lead. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha, Natalie pots the Big Ten freshman of the week with a triple. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the throw, CJ, three is good, got it, bang, all right, CJ Wilcher is on fire. Here is your host, Jessica Cootie, on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome back in our number two of Sports Nightly on this Thursday evening. I'm Jessica Cootie, Greg Sharp, still out this week. And uh, he'll be back next week on Monday. We got Damon Benning coming up. He's going to fill in again tomorrow night. But uh, I'll be with you here over the next hour. And coming up, we're going to hear from Nebraska women's gymnastics head coach Heather Brink as uh, Nebraska women's gymnastics opens up. We'll have their home opener inside Devaney coming up on Saturday. So we're going to learn all about the team and, and what to watch for here coming up up on Saturday, but uh, did want to spend this first segment uh, talking about Nebraska men's basketball and just a uh, tough, tough loss on the road last night at Rutgers at 87 to 82 in overtime and just, um, man, uh, had so many opportunities to, to win that game and were up late in the game and it felt like, felt like a lot of times Rutgers was maybe trying to even allow Nebraska to win that, but just could not grasp that that game, could not come away with it. And, and a lot of things that were a little disappointing for this team, of course, the, the rebounding battle uh, got out-rebounded 56-42, to 42, but the 25 offensive rebounds, you just uh, cannot win games giving up 25 offensive rebounds and, and those second-chance points. But also, you know, the loose balls. I filled in for Greg today on the TV show, and that was one of the first things Coach Hoiberg talked about is that, you know, this team, they pride themselves on getting on the floor and, and getting after those loose balls, and they were just not getting those 50-50 balls like they typically do and uh, just not being aggressive and those offensive rebounds, certainly disappointing for the coaching staff as well. He said, you know, that's about want to and effort and heart, and we just were not providing, we're not getting after it with the same kind of effort that uh, we typically did and the purpose that we typically do, you know, on, on the glass. But uh, also another really disappointing story Jawan Gary goes down. That was a that hurt this team a lot um, down the stretch. Not having Jawan Gary, he's so good on the defensive end, an elite rebounder. How he can grab the board, so that really hurt. Uh, no official update 
on Jawan Gary again. Talked to Coach Hoiberg uh, this morning, and uh, he had Jawan was going to come back and go through the full evaluation here this afternoon. Coach has a press conference tomorrow, and so I'm sure he'll have an update on that. But uh, said Jawan was really sore today, um, sore last night, sore today. I believe it was uh, the Achilles, but um, you know, no official word yet on if he what that injury looks like. Hopefully it's uh, not as bad as it looks because, yeah, let's face it, it, it looked really bad when he limped off the court, was in apparent pain, and then when was helped off was, was sobbing and looked very, very emotional and then did not come back on the bench at all. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have an update on Jawan Gary. It um, would definitely hurt this team moving forward, and I know some of their hopes and um, goals that they have for the future, but, you know, it's it's kind of like what you hear with every team. It's got to be next man up, and you got to have another guy step into that opportunity and and this was a team that was in the same scenario a year ago and in January when they lost Jawan and then Emmanuel Bandamel and uh, uh oh what's what's going to happen and then they found a way to put some things together some guys began to step up and and embrace some opportunities and uh, they were one of the hottest teams down the stretch in this conference and so you know if they don't have Jawan they're going to have to find somebody else to step into that role and you know remember they they didn't have Jawan to start the season so they certainly have played without him and uh, at the beginning of the season but it's uh, no doubt a, a huge loss, but uh, you know a couple of the things down at the at the end of the game, uh, the out of bounds play. Coach Hoiberg had said that that was the second option. Not sure, I, and I was going to look up who was inbounding the ball. Not sure what they saw there that they decided to go with the lob, and then uh, you know the quick three from Casey. Uh, you know one of the things that he got such extreme confidence and everybody has a lot of confidence in him knocking down those threes but probably could have got a better look if he had gotten to the rim with the way teams overplay him but you know you learn from the film and um you know Casey will learn from it but uh, gotta gotta find a way to win on the road and we, we continue to say that because you know this team has shown that they can protect the home court and and they feel very comfortable and they love playing inside PBA but if you want to continue to go after those goals and aspirations getting to the postseason you got to find a way to win on the road and and put together some performances like they are able to do here in Lincoln but that being said it has not been playing on the road has not been kind to the Big Ten Conference to teams in the Big Ten Conference overall 11 and 33 on the road are teams in the Big Ten Conference so it is it's just very very tough and you heard how loud it was there was one point I think the announcers on the Big Ten call there they were up higher but they were still calling the game they didn't even hear the whistles being called it was so loud in that arena and Sam Hoiberg had told me that the day before that is one of the loudest arenas just because they're just so on top of you but uh, you got to play through that and you got to find ways to put together a performance to win one on the road. So before we uh, get too far ahead, I did want to maybe listen back and hear what Coach Hoiberg had to say post game with um, Kent and Jake and some of the thoughts that he had immediately after the loss. 87-82 in overtime. Nebraska drops this one. Coach Hoiberg has joined us. We appreciate that. This is about as hard as it gets to swallow. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I mean, we're you know a couple rebounds away from walking away with a huge road win, and you know it hurts. It, it's 25 offensive rebounds. You know, I know we didn't score in the last nine minutes, but if we find a way to finish off possessions on the other end, we're you know we win this game. And you know, not only on shots but free throws, missed free throws. Uh, you know, you just can't give those up, and too many times. Um, you know, that's what cost us the game, Kent. You know, say all you want about offense. We've been a pretty darn good offensive team all year. We went through struggles. It happens. Uh, you got to find a way to grind it out. You know, that's why I said to him in the locker, you know, rebounding is all about heart and toughness. And we just, again, when you give up 25 of them, it, uh, yeah, it stings. And without Juwan, the, it, the whole thing is exacer exacerbated. Well, it didn't help. I mean, obviously, Jawan and then Joe fouls out. So you got two of your better rebounders on the bench, and you had to go small against a team that was, uh, you know, longer, more athletic, and, you know, just uh, just didn't have the size uh, in there. But still, you got to find a way to get your body on them. You got to hit them. And, you know, it happens, these types of things. You have injuries. You have uh, foul trouble. Uh, you know, next man's got to come in there, and you know, a lot of it's the guards. I mean, our bigs are wrapped up with Cliff down there, and our guards got to come in there and get those long ones over the top. Coach, I thought you guys, I thought you guys played hard. 
you know, for the most part. And, and I know you talked about scrapping for rebounds, but what did you have drawn up at the end of the game for Bryce uh, in regulation? Yeah, it, it, was, it was. I agree with you on the effort. This had nothing to do with, with any type of effort. I thought we played hard. We just didn't play tough enough. Uh, you know what? We, we went too soon on that last play. Uh, Kasey left before Rink was supposed to set a screen. Kasey was going to slip out of it and hopefully give Bryce a lane to the basket. They were staying with Kasey and try to confuse him on the switch. Uh, but we went we went too quickly, and you know we had a couple of those tonight where we just didn 't execute coming off uh, the whiteboard and when we 've done that this year we 've been pretty damn good so you know it 's disappointing we did not execute that play, and then we get another chance at it and you know I think Casey was coming back on a crack back, and we try to throw a one percent play on the lob over the top to to Bryce and you know it 's just you got to let those things go you know you got to see the next option. And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Like you said, Ken, you said it best. This one stings. Coach, what was, uh, what was said to the, to the players in the locker room, and how do you turn the page after this one to look forward to Northwestern on Saturday? Well, we got we got to get over it quickly. We got to learn from it and move on. And you know, the bottom line is, we just we got to find a way to get some toughness. It is you know, unfortunately, becoming a bad theme that we're we're getting out rebounded uh, on most nights. And we got to find a way to flip that. If if you win the glass, generally you win the game. And we got to find a way. You know, we just got to dig in and and, uh, and 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 you know get like I said, it's, it's, rebounding is all about hustle, guts, toughness, and right now we're just not good enough in in that area to win consistently. Yeah, and you know the stretches of not being able to score certainly didn't help either. Uh, another note too: Rink Bass had a had a tough stretch or a tough game last night. Four points, two of twelve. From the field, and I, I asked Coach Hoiberg about that today on the TV show. He said he's he not 100%. They've been really limited what they can do with him in practice, so uh, it doesn't help either. You know, when you're trying to, you know, he's one of the, your best player and and does so much on the offensive end, but you you are limited in what you can do with him on the floor. It uh, doesn't help as well. But um, yeah, that that was tough as well. But they, hey, you got to bounce back and and are back at home for a couple of games starting with Saturday against Northwestern Alumni Weekend. So a lot going on there. And I know this uh, program and, and this athletics department are really excited to have to, to be honoring the alumni. They got a lot coming back, a lot of festivities surrounding it. So 115 on Saturday against Northwestern. So and we'll have the pregame show for you here on the Huskers Radio Network starting at 1215 with uh, Kent and Jake. All right, going to step aside for a break here on Sports Nightly. If problem gambling is burning up your money, there is a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment, just help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. Coming up next, we're going to talk some Nebraska women's gymnastics with head coach Heather Brink. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery? without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor. Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe. Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya, a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show Hair Grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woodhouse Place Nissan makes shopping for your next vehicle simple. Browse our inventory, apply for financing, and more from the comfort of your own home. Right now, lease a 2023 Nissan Rogue S for $199 per month for 36 months and 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, tax, title, and license extra. $6,250 down plus first payment and $299 doc fee to its signing. Discounted price based on a sale price of $28,684. 2000 and NAT cash available towards deal for qualified customers who select standard APR rate. VIN number PC926399. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice 
to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Nautil Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Nautil Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Nautil Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Well, the season is up and running for Nebraska women's gymnastics. They've got a couple of meets under their belt, and they'll have the, their home opener coming up on Saturday against Illinois. And to talk a little bit about the team and the meet this weekend is head coach Heather Brink. Uh, thanks for coming in yeah, and joining absolutely. us. We're excited to have you here. Yeah, same. Excited to be here. Excited for our home season to get going. And uh, you know, just looking for a big crowd to be out there and, and cheering us on for sure. You guys had to open up with two meets on the road. Uh, how did you like how your team performed in those first couple of weekends? Yeah, I mean, I think we started off the season at, at Iowa State. Um, it was a really strong showing for us as far as uh, hit routines. Um, started out with a good score. Uh, looking to kind of build into that was um, going to Utah last week for uh, the Sprouts Farmers Collegiate Quad. Uh, which was a really great opportunity for us to kind of be on podium and um, adjust. And it was kind of some highs and some lows in, in that space. I think uh, we had some athletes, six career highs last week. So I think there's some really great things to continue to build off of. Want them to continue to build off of the confidence that we've had and, um, you know, just work on kind of minimizing some of the mistakes that we did have to count and um, pulling together, you know, as a team and just really enjoying what we have left of season. Well, if you follow Nebraska Women's Gymnastics on social media, you see Team 49. Tell yes. us about that. Yeah, so it's the 49th team of uh, Nebraska Gymnastics. Um, we, we really challenged the team at the beginning of the year to think about what they wanted their identity to be um, and that that identity really needed to have meaning to them. You know, was it more important that they understood what that identity was or that the outsiders did? And to them, it was more about what they think Team 49 stands for. So uh, we spent a lot of time working kind of through what that looks like um, from, you know, connection of the group to um, having that and then just having that quick saying of, you know, Team 49. So um, it has a deeper meaning than just the 49 team and, and what kind of makes them unique from 1 through 48. Um, but I think, you know, we're going to continue to challenge them to find what that identity is and, and kind of live it day to day on, on the competition floor. 
Well, your team last year made the postseason. You had a lot of those gymnasts that are back this year. Mm. You added a couple of newcomers, but uh, let's start with some of the ones coming back, and let's start with Kenzie Davis because just announced she is the uh, Big Ten Specialist of the Week coming yeah. off. We had another career high nine nine seven five. Yeah, last week. Uh, what's Kind of going into her this season for her, what's the expectations and yeah. goals for her? Getting that yeah. 10? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think she definitely has the capabilities to do that. Of course, um, you know, the it's kind of out of our hands once you do the routine. So uh, just really kind of, Kinsey's put a lot of work in this summer, um, kind of from a mentality and, and growth perspective. Um, I think she's really stepped into, uh, you know, a leader um, on the team. I think she has uh, a lot of drive and a lot of comp competitive spirit in her um, and so just really kind of um, has been able to hit that stride for herself which is kind of where we want her you know I want her to be able to enjoy this or last year um, and uh, you know I think she feels really confident in the routines we've kind of changed some of the routines up so she's able to um, really deliver on some key points for her just beautiful lines to watch on bars um, knows how to stick her landing and of course when she lands and sticks them um, you know she really celebrates that and that's a lot of fun to watch as well we had a Chang'e Bax Baxway in here earlier back she's an Olympian qualified for mm -hmm. the Olympics mm -hmm. back earlier in the fall and it seems like she's really got off to a great start yeah. too how have you seen that experience kind of go into her confidence and in, in her sophomore season here uh, to, to start off yeah like you said she's got a year under her belt she's healthy this year um, so she's training all four events I think she's working really hard to kind of clean up some of the the little things she needs to continue to work on but I mean last week she had two career highs one on floor she started us off with a beautiful floor routine last week nine nine um, looking for her to kind of continue to build off of that confidence um, and then like you said she's qualified as um, for her country Hungary uh, in the Olympics on vault so she has a pretty spectacular vault a 10 0 start value for us um, just helps us kind of have that higher start values um, even starting the competition so yeah just looking for her to kind of settle in get consistent with that but uh, really proud of her direction in that she's heading um, again I just think another athlete that's really put in a lot of work um, in in how she mentally approaches the sport um, but also kind of fine-tuning those details and what she brings to the table some of those other uh, returners, there's a, a lot of them, as mentioned, that have bigger roles for you. What Can you specifically maybe name some of those and what you're kind of looking for this season out of some of those, those gymnasts? Yeah, I mean, Emma Spence, obviously, is coming back, um, an all-arounder for us. Uh, I think you'll see her um, be able to pop in and out of the all-around this year, uh, hopefully giving her some opportunity to rest and, and recover and be able to last the entire season. Um, I think her strengths, again, she brings a 10-0 start value on vault for us. Uh, she's put in a lot of work to clean up some of her uh, details. Uh, she's got a 9.975 before, too. So, uh, yeah, just looking for her to really kind of remember what her number one goal is, which is to enjoy the sport um, and really just be able to perform to, to her uh, capabilities. Uh, Sophia McClelland, uh, another senior for us. Um, again, training all four events. I think she's put in a lot of work, uh, as I've noted many times already. Uh, we have a lot more depth this year, so I think that that's put some competition in some spaces, which is, um, in my opinion, healthy competition for the girls to compete for their spots in the lineup. Um, and Sophia, every day, you know, shows up for that for that opportunity to try to earn those those spots. So um, she was back at Utah this weekend. Um, started off on on beam with a nine nine. Uh, went to floor nine eight seven five, and I think you'll see her have some opportunities on vault and bars as well. Um, beyond that, you have Hallie Rourke. So Hallie's a, a hometown Husker, so from uh, Waverly area. Uh, she performs for us on floor. She's got a new floor choreography. Um, just really beautiful athlete to watch. Uh, a lot of fun on floor to, to watch for us. Uh, Asia Hall, uh, another junior for us. I think she's really kind of found her, her confidence and her stride. She's been in on the first two meets on vault and beam. Um, she's probably one of the most talented athletes I think we've had. Um, just looking for her to kind of find that confidence and that groove for herself. Um, and settle into her, her gymnastics as well. Uh, Emma Simpton's returning for us. Again, another beautiful athlete, really long, beautiful lines, uh, pretty consistent on um, both bars and beam. Uh, I think you'll see her kind of, you know, be able to deliver and build on that confidence. Uh, again, a 99995 athlete every single time. So uh, just want her to kind of be able to find her, 
her confidence in the performance and, and managing some of that pressure. But, uh, yeah, absolutely just kind of looking forward to some of that, that growth. Um, as far as, um, you know, sophomores, like you said, Chenge uh, is back. I think you'll see some other uh, sophomores who have uh, healthy this year, which is a which is good thing, um, and really vying for some, some competition spots for sure. What does that do for you knowing, I mean, you got so many people that have that experience that yeah. have competed at this level that now you get to work with that and, and it's less about maybe getting them settled into the experience role, yeah. but it's more yeah. about kind of figuring out where they fit best. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, having that, that competition, we only lost one routine from last year, um, gives us an opportunity to kind of be able to bring along some of the underclassmen and, and prepare them. So, you know, maybe they're not in all around right away, but they're, they're practicing all around um, and just kind of easing them into that, to that collegiate experience. I mean, we talk a lot about the differences between college gymnastics and club gymnastics and what that means and what that looks like, um, but they don't really fully understand it until they kind of get through a season. So I think that's nice to be able to spend our uh, attention uh, kind of on that instead of having to uh, focus on, you know, the upperclassmen are kind of in their groove and, and doing their thing and uh, know exactly what it's about. I think they're really hungry, you know. I mean, we have a group of athletes that, um, you know, they want to call it their redemption. They, they know what they're capable physically um, of being able to do. And so I think that that brings, you know, success breeds success, right? You start at the top and it kind of trickles down. So um, really excited to kind of see how this team kind of grows and blossoms on the competition floor. Two meets under our bell is still kind of early, but um, they, they have it in them to attain their goals that they're looking forward to doing this year. Um, and I think having that leadership of um, those upperclassmen being able to like, no, this is, this is how you get it done. Um, and just be able to rely on them is, is going to be an important role for them as well. All right, let's talk about a few of your newcomers. Uh, Lucy Stanhope, the transfer from Utah, what has she brought to the program? Yeah, I mean, Lucy, um, you know, is a strong all-arounder. Um, she was in um, at both Iowa State and uh, Utah. Um, unfortunately, she suffered an ankle injury this last weekend, so um, not quite sure what that looks like moving forward. We'll take it day by day and, and kind of see how she transpires. But, um, you know, I think she, she brings that com competitive spirit with her in the sense of she's been in some pretty high pressure situations. Uh, I think she knows um, kind of how to manage some of those and, and just looking for her to, you know, find that leadership. Uh, might look like a little different role right this second, but uh, what that leadership looks like and, and how she kind of fits in with our, with our team. So, yeah. And you are excited about your freshmen. Yeah. Tell us about them. Yeah, I mean, we got Isabel Sycon. Um, she's from the San Antonio area. Um, really, again, a strong all-arounder. I think she has the potential. I don't think we've capped into that uh, full potential quite yet. I think she's been consistently in on beam, um, leads us off. Pretty high-pressure situation to be in last week in Utah. First event, first athlete to go, uh, and delivered a, a you know, season high for herself. So um, really looking for her to find that confidence in, in all four events. Um, I think you'll see a lot of her throughout her career. Um, and just being able, I'm just kind of that steady Eddie, you know, mm -hmm. she doesn't have real high highs, she doesn't have real low lows, just kind of that steady Eddie to the group. And I think that those people are important as well. Uh, Whitney Jenks is uh, from uh, Minnesota, Jim in Minnesota. Um, and, uh, you know, strong all around her for us. She's coming off an injury from club gymnastics um, that, you know, she's kind of been nursing back. So uh, looking for her to kind of get back into that groove of, um, you know, her stride and her uh, competition. I think that first competition at Iowa State was was good experience for her where she's like just hungry for more. She feeds off of competition. So um, I see great things for her in the future and, and we'll see how kind of the season transpires and, and getting back full strength on, on all of the events. So. All right, well, you know I got to ask you about the floor routine. It seems like floor has been an event out of the gate yeah. that's been really strong for your team, but it's uh, always a fan favorite. Tell us about what we can expect if uh, fans are going to come out and watch you guys on yeah, Friday. We got a lot of, yeah, we got a lot of new uh, floor routines, a lot of new choreography this year. Uh, watch for us um, and try to learn where the Go Big Reds and, and Go Skurs are in, in every one of our floor routines. Um, I think we have a lot of veteran experience on there from Martina Comine, uh, Emma Spence, obviously, um, some new, newer faces coming in. Sophia, I think, will, will be, I mean, Sophia is just a lot of fun to watch perform, too. So um, 
Marissa King is is our fourth coach this year, our third assistant. Um, and so she's really kind of provided a lot of that choreography and performance value. She's worked really hard in the preseason with the girls to kind of pull out their personalities. I mean, it's just an opportunity for them to shine and um, be able to, you know, let loose and have some fun while, while doing their sport. So hope the crowd gets involved and uh, can help us kind of bring it home. All right, so 6.30 Saturday, home opener inside Devaney against Illinois. What are you looking for out of your team in the home opener? You know, I mean, I, I think it's a lot of fun to just be in front of our home crowd. So, I, one, I want them to remember let, to, you know, stay loose and have a lot of fun while doing their gymnastics. Um, I think we've got some, you know, process goals we're trying to work on as far as hit routines uh, in that consistency aspect of things. Uh, I'd like to see them kind of... Um, you know, relax a little bit and just just do what they're capable of doing in training. And um, it should be a comfortable zone for us, having practiced in the arena. Um, look for the crowd to kind of get involved and kind of help us, uh, you know, be that seventh man in the in the lineup for us. Um, I, it does make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So I just want the, the interaction between our team and our crowd to be um, noticeable. I want the girls to feed off of that energy. Um, and, you know, just, just trust themselves in, in what they're doing. So, um, yeah, come on out. We're looking for a good time and uh, hoping that the crowd will show up and, and help us do so. Last season, you guys had some really great crowds, some guys, yeah. some crowds that were really involved. And just overall in, in Husker Athletics, just the, the support behind women's sports it seems to just continue to grow and grow. What does that mean to you as a head yeah. coach for Nebraska yeah. Women's Gymnastics that continues to kind of up the ante yeah. for the Husker Nation? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm from here in Lincoln, so, you know, obviously competed for the University of Nebraska. Um, and so I've seen some different, you know, different eras of, of the sport and uh, women's sports in general. So um, I think it just means a lot. I mean, when we go through our recruiting process, I talk really heavily about our community and uh, the support that our community gives to our student athletes. So to see, you know, volleyball day, to have record crowds for ourselves last year um, has really been important and it really feeds into the girls or the student athletes, um, you know, their experience and, and kind of that camaraderie. Um, I think when I talk about Nebraska, it's about that family dynamic. Um, and when you have the crowd that shows up to support us, um, I think it really, it really does have a lot of meaning to, to them, um, especially when you're like looking around at the crowd and you're seeing, you know, little girls who someday dream of, of being a Husker gymnast or, you know, a, a female student athlete here at Nebraska. Um, so I, I hope we continue, can continue to do so, uh, set some records in, in that sense. Uh, we've got some really great uh, things planned as far as marketing and promotion and uh, giveaways for, for our fans. So, yeah, I mean, I, I th it, it does really make a world of a difference to look up and, and to hear that crowd chanting, you know, 10 or go big red or, uh, you know, just really kind of cheering them on. So, um, yeah, just looking to continue to, to do so. I think we've already sold more season tickets than, than we've had in the, in the past. Um, hoping that, you know, we get those single session tickets uh, sold as well. So, yeah, come on out. That's incredible. Huskers.com slash tickets and back to back weekends. You guys are going to be at yes, home inside the yes, Vandy. Yeah, so and this you weekend. You can't make it out this weekend. Come out next weekend. Yep. And next weekend is Michigan, which is probably our biggest rival within our conference. Um, it's Pepsi Pack the House Night on the 27th um, and Illinois this weekend. So we start our conference play uh, pretty strong to competitors back to back at home. Well, appreciate your stuff. Great stuff. And uh, fans, get on out there, watch this team. They put on a great show. It's exciting stuff. So best of luck this weekend. Yes, thank you very much. Again, that is Heather Brink, head coach of Nebraska Women's Gymnastics. 6.30 Saturday night inside the Devaney Center as Nebraska hosts Illinois for their home opener. All right, we've got to step aside for a break here on Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Woodhouse Ford is committed to making the car buying experience better. Purchasing your next car, truck, or SUV from Woodhouse Ford is easier than ever. Shop our current inventory and offers going on now and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford today. Save up to $4,500 off MSRP plus 1.9% APR for 60 months on a 2023 Ford Explorer Limited. With approved credit, $299 dock fee due at signing. Vehicle is a retired courtesy loaner. Stock number R230491. Offer expires 131-2024. See dealer for details. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. 
From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! You could win a 2024 Porsche Macan from Porsche Omaha this season. Four lucky Husker fans will have a chance to win a 2024 Porsche Macan if they make a full court putt at halftime at one of four men's basketball games this season. For more information and the official rules, go to www.huskers.com slash putt. Jim in Columbus on our text line had a nice text about the uh, Nebraska assistant coaches that joined us last um, during the women's basketball show. Let me pull this up. Uh, he said, enjoy the interview, Jessica, that you just had with the assistant basketball coaches. was nice to know what they do and how they contribute to the teams. Yeah, I um, have said this before, but the Nebraska women's basketball staff is uh, no doubt one of my favorite staffs on campus from top to bottom. All of the people that are involved, they're so great, so great to work with. And when we were chatting with uh, Coach Williams this summer and she had mentioned getting the assistant coaches involved, thought uh, that would be a great opportunity for fans to get to hear from them because they are, they're, they're awesome, they're fun to be around and um, have great perspectives, very knowledgeable. And it's, it's really cool to see how they work together, which, you know, that's, that's great for every coaching staff right but uh certainly uh a staff that works really well together and it's it's fun to see they have a great they have great working relationships so we're uh, excited to be able to, to bring you a few of those perspectives here in our, our nebraska women's 
basketball show. I also uh, wanted to pass along this story. So yesterday morning at 7 a.m., part of uh, a new initiative, well, over the last year or so that's been brought on here within the athletics department is Husk Hers. And there's different events that you can be a part of the women within the athletics department. There's meetings every month and they have speakers like Dr. The last one that I went to a couple months ago was Susan Elza spoke with along with Maddie Fowler Burkhardt and, and getting into leadership within a, a, an athletics department and, you know, answer questions, all that. There's a lot of different events that they do, but uh, to start off the season or the year here in 2024, they had a couple of different cool events. One of those was a meeting with uh, Lisa Kopecki, who we've had on the show here before with the Nutrition Podcast, and diving into some of the things you can do as everybody wants to start out healthy here in 2024. But the other event was going to a cycling class that was. Um, hosted and uh, led by none other than Nebraska head softball coach Rhonda Ravel. So I am not really typically a morning person by any means, especially, you know, we get off the show here about eight o'clock and then I'm usually wired. So um, I usually go to bed a little bit later. So I'm not quite the early riser, but I thought it'd be fun. We hear coach uh, Ravel talking about her cycling and how that's a big hobby of hers. So I thought, oh my gosh, it'd be, it'd be pretty fun to get there and, and see how she is. And I got to tell you, it was so cool to get to see her in that element. And she's so inspiring and so uplifting. And I think if you hear her speak, you're probably not surprised by it. But she, you know, I am not a big cycling fan. I've been to cycling classes, but I'm not a big fan of it. But she made it so fun and she was so positive and uplifting. And it just got me thinking how, how cool it is probably for these players, how much they enjoy getting to play for her, if, if that's what she's like day in and day out on a daily basis. But I got to tell you, I am sore today. I've been sore all day today uh, getting on that bike. And I didn't even go the whole, I was a little bit late, I must admit. Um, but it was a great workout and um, very cool to just, again, have a different kind of perspective. And I know she really, it, it's important for her to have something outside of coaching that she, she's able to do. And um, so she teaches on Wednesdays at the YMCA if you're ever interested in checking out a class. But it was really cool and, and awesome to get to see that aspect of her. And uh, Nebraska softball ranked in the top 15 in the two preseason polls that have been released. And I think they're a little bit better than that. But obviously, you know, just got to see how they perform out of the gate. It'll be here before you know it. I was going to look up. I, I had the countdown pulled up, but it is um, going to be here before you know it. I, I, yeah, I do think, you know, with the addition of Jordy Ball and then having so many players coming back, they're, they're probably, I think, more could be potentially a top 15 team or a top 10 team, but uh, got to prove it to start the season. I think that, you know, again, just um, a lot of uh, respect for this program and with making it to the postseason and how they performed last year. And then with the addition of Jordy Ball, uh, have caught a lot of attention. So top 15 in the nation and um, excited. Tomorrow is media day, so we'll try to get out there and get a, a couple interviews to bring to you and preview the season. Of course, we'll do a lot of coverage of both uh, softball and baseball. It'll be here before you know it. Crazy to think about that. Uh, we are less than a month out from softball season and, and quickly approaching the baseball season as well, but excited for that. Uh, another kind of interesting uh, tidbit today, um, well, actually it was yesterday. The we, Damon and I had talked about this on the show when he filled in on Tuesday. The news had started to come out that the Nebraska football coaching staff was adding Glenn Thomas as the quarterback's coach. But yesterday we did not have a show on Sports Nightly, but it was officially announced by the athletics department on the football account on the Huskers.com. So the officially edition, the official, official edition of Glenn Thomas. And so here were a couple of quotes from head coach Matt Rule and then also uh, coach Thomas himself. And, and coach Rule said, Glenn Thomas has a history of success throughout his coaching career. And I look forward to him being a part of the Nebraska football program. Glenn has proven to be an elite developer of quarterbacks and his background at both the collegiate and NFL levels is a great addition to our coaching staff. I think that's really uh, big, and, and Damon and I talked about that, just the development of quarterbacks in that position and with some young quarterbacks coming in, how important that's going to be to have a coach that, um, you know, kind of is able to really get their hands on those you know, young quarterbacks and develop them. 
And Coach Thomas said, I'm honored for the opportunity to join a tradition-rich football program at the University of Nebraska. I've been fortunate to work for Coach Roll in the past and appreciate the chance to join him and his outstanding staff at Nebraska. Can't wait to get to Lincoln and go to work with the Husker offense. So, yeah, we had kind of reported on that, but uh, it is officially official that Glenn Thomas will be joining the Nebraska football coaching staff. Going to work in our final break here and get to our final segment here on Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms, visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to wrap up the show coming up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Welcome back. Our final segment here of Sports Nightly. Been a fun couple of hours, fast one. We talked to Nebraska women's basketball in hour number one with Julian Asibe and Jessica Keller. And then uh, appreciate Heather Brink stopping, uh, stopping by and talking uh, Nebraska women's gymnastics. Hey, I think they're, uh, they're going to be pretty good. They got some young freshmen and uh, some solid uh, returners. And so it's, it's a fun team. And I think they're uh, going to be a really uh, solid team moving forward and um, should be a fun fun one out there. I'm actually getting a chance to call the, uh, the meet on Saturday, so i got to do some Nebraska or some gymnastics prep here over the next couple of days, but I'm excited about it. It's a fun team, a fun group. Uh, enjoy being around them, and so uh, yeah, uh, appreciate that for Heather Brink stopping by and, and get on out there and, and support this team. Carla uh, on our text line said, Evening, Jessica. Will you be calling any more of the women's basketball games? Also, I think you should Join Kent and Jake on a men's basketball broadcast. Hey, that would be fun. Maybe we could sometime, Russ, uh, figure out a way to do sideline for the basketball games. But um, yeah, that'd be fun to join those guys. Uh, I don't know about uh, women's basketball. You know, I was able to do those last year when they were in the NIT tournament, but they typically have the, the students and the student you broadcast do that. But I'm excited to call some gymnastics here over the next few weeks. So uh, that'll be fun. And uh, yeah, I actually looked up during the break 20 days for softball. So exactly the countdown is 20 days coming up February 8th for Nebraska softball for their opener. A busy weekend for Nebraska sports. Uh, again, as these teams get rolling here, we have more and more sports overlapping uh, crossover season and uh, wrestling uh, back in action tomorrow night. 
Mention that Damon Benning will be here with us again tomorrow night. He loves talking wrestling. He's a big wrestling guy, so we'll try to talk a little wrestling. But they are back in action, looking to bounce back, coming off the loss to Iowa over the weekend. Uh, they've dropped to number six in the rankings, but they got another, again, imagine this, a top ten matchup in the Big Ten at number nine Minnesota. Late, late start time, nine o'clock on the Big Ten Network. But nine of the ten bouts will feature matchups of uh, top wrestlers potentially and it was pretty cool today on the uh, Huskers football uh, social media accounts. They posted a photo of Nash, and I got to pull up the exact wording of it. They had a couple of different pictures of Nash, and it's 6:30 a.m. in the weight room doing football workouts, and you can see him uh, lifting the weights there. And then 10 a.m. on the mat uh, back in the the wrestling wrestling room. So we'll see if uh, Nash can bounce back. He uh, had a a really exciting first matchup uh, when he had the pin, but then uh, lost last week uh, to the guy from Iowa. So we'll see if uh, he's back in the lineup this weekend. They got a couple of duels this weekend. Again, mentioned Minnesota, and then they'll have Purdue. They're back at home on Sunday, 1 o'clock against Purdue. It was also cool over the last couple of days to see all the freshmen moving in to their dorms, uh, both football and uh, volleyball. The two freshmen for Nebraska volleyball are officially moved in. But, you know, we, we've seen really over the, the last, this about started a year ago with the, the football team, the team moving in, then they start workouts, and they start doing the team activities. So they did some volunteer service on, on Martin Luther King Day and, and getting those freshmen already acclimated. I've talked a lot about this and over the, the last year, but when I sat down with Gus Felder back in the summer, because it was, I kept hearing this about how important it was, you know, this, this player development and what they're doing outside of just the workouts and the practices and how they're integrating the guys and they're mixing them up. It's not just the same positions that are getting out and volunteering. They're mixing up the guys, guys that may, might not ever interact otherwise. But it was really important to the culture that they were able to establish and the buy-in and the belief for this program. And so already right away as these guys are getting moved in, they're getting um, moved in and then involved in the community. And so had a, had a really cool community service event um, on Monday and uh, it just is so important to, to what this program and this team wants to do and then yeah the volleyball freshmen get moved in which another important aspect that we heard these freshmen volleyball players talk a lot about them being able to come in and make an immediate impact is that they were able to get here in January and go through the full beach season and then the spring volleyball season and so then they it wasn't like they were learning things over the summer and then trying to figure it out once they got on the match for the on the court for the preseason it was they were already got a sense and feel for what Nebraska volleyball was all about and it was really critical for them to be able to come in and make an immediate impact so here we are the the two freshmen Freshman that uh, you know he had the Gatorade Player of the Year and then All American MVP at the All American match. So you know, really, really big to get those players in here and and be able to already get acclimated and not feel like freshmen when they when they get here. So uh, it's, it was fun to see and not easy to move in, by the way, in these conditions with the snow everywhere. And you know, they did have done a pretty good job trying to clear it out, but it's still pretty snowy. The students here are not on campus yet. Uh, the full student body not on campus yet. So there's still some pretty icy and snowy parking lots and streets and uh, not ideal moving in conditions but they got it done so all the freshmen have been moved in especially those freshmen for those sports that are moving in now and and getting acclimated and moving in in january and hey winter workouts underway so uh we're going to talk a, a lot more that's a, one of the things that uh, dame and i were going to talk about but we didn't get to on tuesday so we'll talk to him about that a, a little bit coming up tomorrow night so um wow what a show uh, appreciate you guys tuning in um, as mentioned, Greg Sharp out. This Tomorrow will be the last day that he'll be out, so he'll be back on Monday. But uh, Damon coming in. We're going to try to talk some Nebraska softball as they'll have their media day. We're going to talk a little uh, Nebraska men's basketball alumni weekend. So try to get one of those alums that'll be here and, and uh, kind of look back at that So and preview the weekend with Northwestern. So should be a fun show coming up tomorrow night. Hope you'll tune in uh, tomorrow night with us here on Sports Nightly. And, um, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thanks to Jessica Keller and Je Julian Asibe for filling in for Coach Williams here tonight on our Nebraska women's basketball show. And uh, thanks to everyone for helping us out here in the studio. And thanks to you for listening. We'll see you tomorrow night here on Sports Nightly.
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your 